keep them coming. We'll answer them. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Brad. All right. Now, uh, Andy, come on up here, man. But you know what? How we're going to kick off your section here. We are going to go into a beautiful polling question. How do you feel about that? I love polling questions. I Bring it on, Brad. I love Brad. polling questions. Now, check this one out. I think you're going to like this one. Are okay. you ready? Do you, does your company have a cloud-first strategy? Okay. We, we are totally cloud first. I so figured you were. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. That's that's where we got to be at. In fact, we're so close. I think by the end of the year, we might be completely in Azure. Is that right? We are we are getting really that's close. Your goal, to, of that's, course. that's the goal. Hey, so check this out. So my question to these guys, yes, we are, are, we are cloud first and fully enforced, right? Because the next question is, yeah, we're cloud first, but it's up to the department to decide. And by the way, what does cloud first mean? It means if you need some sort of service within your organization, you should go to the cloud to see if it's offered first. And if it's not, go ahead and install servers and build stuff. Exactly. But, but just like, don't do building and, and all that stuff without checking, right? And then the last one is like, no, not today, not cloud first today, right? You ready for the results? All right. This is crazy stuff here. We're going to share I the got, results. I got an idea what it's going to be. Yeah? What do you think? I think, I think about oh, probably less than 20% on cloud first. Less than 20 on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What do we I got? Think you're right. 26%, right? Yeah. Cloud about... first, down across the board, cloud first. There's an 18% folks that said we're cloud first, but sort of, yeah. because it's up to the department to really decide if they play. And then a whopping 56% that are not cloud first today. Now, obviously, every time we do this and every year we do this, it's more and more and more cloud. There's more cloud resource, more right. confidence, more services and so forth. But that is a good sampling today. And, right. and that's that's pretty much what uh, the trend has been. I think yeah. it, it trends up a little bit. You know, yeah. the year two years ago is probably less than 10 percent. So it's, yeah. it's definitely trending up. Twenty six percent is strong. And you know what? I think this is in large part why these folks are here to hear about you today. You know, you're a shining example of someone that is actually uh, like you just said, cloud first and soon to be like cloud only, you know, practically. Right. Exactly. So have yeah. at it. Well, there's my tagline right there. I think Brad captured that when we first went to WorkSpot. So yeah, we are seeing ridiculous speeds. I mean, that's really what it's about. Uh, we're we want to get the best uh, best thing we can have for all of our people. So uh, obviously, WorkSpot, Azure, and, and Panzer have been able to uh, uh, get us there. So is this thing working? Yeah. All right. So a little bit about Meet and Hunt. We started back in uh, 1900. Uh, so we're a 120 year old firm and a uh, little known fact about me i started in 1990 so this is actually my 30th year of being at uh, meet and hunt i started when i was nine so that's uh, that's uh, you know what I'm, I'm hoping for but yeah 30 years at meet and hunt so it's been uh, it's been a really uh, it's been a really good ride and uh, a little bit of history about us all right so where are we at today? When I started, we actually had, I think it was about 85 people and we had one office. So this last year, uh, we went over 900 people. We have more than 30 offices. I think it's somewhere around 38 offices. Uh, we're 119 in the top 500 ENR firm list right now. In fact, this year, we are probably gonna break the 100 mark. We're hoping that's gonna be the case. Last year, we had $136 million in revenue. This year, we had $159 million in revenue. So I think that comes out in May sometimes. So we're really looking for double digits. That's uh, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, rated one of the best places to work. And really, we couldn't be where we're at today if it wasn't for Panzera initially, and then WorkSpot to follow up on that, because it was two really big technologies that uh, really got us to be able to do what we we're, um, were able to do today. Because we're, we're super big on collaboration. And if we weren't able to collaborate, I don't think we'd be uh, nearly as big as we are. Let's see. So the meet and hunt purpose, uh, it's kind of our tagline right now. It's shaping the future by putting people first. It really, engineering firms are, you know, kind of at a dime a dozen. What differentiates you from, uh, from the next person? It's really about the people. I mean, you can go to anybody, you can get engineering done, but it, it's, uh, again, it, it's really about the people. That's what we really focus on. We want to make sure that that experience that we give to everybody is the uh, highest quality that we can definitely uh, produce. Uh, again, a lot of work is the same, but it, it really is the people that, that makes a difference. And, and a lot of people say that, but I mean, that's really what we're founded on. Our, uh, our founder, Daniel Mead, who started a company in, uh, in uh, 1900, that's really what he said back then, and that's how we still live today, 120 years from when we started. Uh, what are our values? Now, these are really important because without these, uh, I, I don't know if I've been able to do some of the things that I've done in the company. Obviously, taking care of people, do the right thing, do what makes sense. 
Well, there was a lot of things that I did that maybe didn't seem like it was the best thing to do. I mean, we went to NT uh, 3.50 and we had a perfectly fine running Novell uh, system back in the day. We had a fine running phone system. We went over to voice over IP before it was really ready. We jumped to the cloud almost seven years ago. We went to Panzer and said, we're going to put all of our file system on <laughs> Panzer. And I was like, you really think that's the right thing? And I'm like, yes, this is something that we really need to do. And going to, uh, to WorkSpot, we needed to be able to have a workstation out to everybody. So in their home, wherever they're at, we had to have that same feel, that same look, so everybody was treated the same. And that's, uh, that's part of doing the, doing the right thing. And really, that's, that's our culture. You know, our culture at Meet and Hunt, what I always heard was, you know, had that mothership motto out there. It's like, hey, the mothership, you know, they, they do it this way. And then our offices, we don't get the exact same thing. Everybody gets the exact same thing. Everybody gets the same laptops. Everybody gets the same experience. So it doesn't matter where you're at. We got to make a distinguish, distinction between what is needed and what is wanted. So we just did an acquisition. Uh, we had an office that was a little bit bigger and it had two smaller offices. What do we do? We still use Penzer. We put Penzer into that main location. Does that make sense? The other offices had just a few people in it, so we put WorkSpot in there. So it's a hybrid. You got to look and see what makes sense. We have, I think we have somewhere around 30 controllers, both virtual and uh, standard controllers in Penzer that we're using across the United States. And we're also using WorkSpot in about nine offices across the U.S. So it, it's, it's a combination. We just wanna make sure that you could be in, in Idaho working in your own home office and you're gonna have the exact same experience that you're gonna be in Middleton, Wisconsin in our, in our largest office. Everybody wants to have the same experience. Everybody gets the same exposure. <laughs> Nobody is left behind. So what, what does Meet and Hunt do? Here's, a, here's just a sampling of the services that we, uh, the, we offer. A lot of this will probably resonate with a lot of people that are uh, on the line right now. Um, you know, like, what do you do for a company? Probably our biggest, uh, um, two biggest departments right now are aviation, transportation. They probably account for half of the revenue in our company. Uh, but we have other, um, other departments that we have in, in a very diverse uh, system inside Meet and Hunt. All right, so here's the, here's the meat slide, I guess. Uh, where were we before and where are we today? So we tried on-prem BDI, we did uh, remote desktops, we did, we did everything. There was 13 different technologies that we tried out before we really you know, found Panzera. I mean, Panzera was really the, the catalyst for us. That, that got everything going because we had several issues with losing data, having data all over, data sprawl. We had all this, all these problems across the entire organization. And really to have that organized, the fact that we got one central area for all of our files, that's, that's pivotal to what we're doing. Nobody's overwritten a file in seven years since we've had Panzera. We haven't had any cyber, um, any cyber occurrences, no ransomware because of how Panzers are in encrypted, how safe they are, that is completely locked down. That's pivotal. But we also need to have something to be able to work out of, out of people's homes. And that's where the, you know, the work spot came into. We didn't really have that. It really didn't make sense necessary to drop a Panzera infrastructure into, uh, into somebody's home. But yet, if somebody wanted to use Revit or wanted to use Civil 3D, if they were a heavy hitter and we needed to work out of their home, then what's, uh, what's make sure they had the, the best technology? And HR will actually even bring that into their, into, you know, when they're hiring somebody, like, you know, if, if, if you're only available to work out of your home and we don't have an office where you're at, but you really want to come work for Meet and Hunt, we can get you hooked up so you can still be a part of it. Because we truly are looking for the best people around. That's what we want to hire at Meet and Hunt. And we're able to do that now is always hire the best people. Uh, we do have the best people in the industry because we have this technology around us. Uh, our our future tech, we're doing a lot with Azure. We're moving more of our servers up there. Uh, we only have a handful of servers um, that are, are waiting to go up there. We're going to be getting the uh, M365 E5 licenses next, uh, and that's going to get us to put our, uh, our phone system completely in the cloud. So going to the Cloud PBX, there's a lot of different vendors 
Um, but we really think that Microsoft has it uh, has it going on. We want to get that endpoint protection figured out. So the ATP, you know what they're doing on it and the endpoint protection. And then we really putting a lot of uh, a lot into the Power BI. Uh, we really think that's uh, that's going to be huge. And then the more things we can do around Power BI, that's that's what it's all about. Obviously, the works by Panzera. Vision AI, we're just starting to use Vision AI a little bit more. I mean, what's great about that is you have your file structure. You want to find a file. You can literally look over millions and millions of files. And in just seconds, you can find that file. So I, I lost this file on a drive letter someplace. I've got 13 drive letters. How am I going to find that file? Oh, I'll go in Vision AI, type out the file name. Bam, right there it is. I can always find those files. There's a lot of neat things that are coming on, on Vision AI. I know Rich is going to talk more about that, but I mean, that's, uh, that is really an up and coming uh, um, uh, thing that they're working on. Uh, software as a service is pretty much all that, uh, all that we're doing. Software service and desktop as a service and the CapEx versus the OpEx. We don't buy anything anymore. The last time we bought a server was six years ago. You know, I mean, that's great. We buy routers, we buy switches and, and that's it. We don't buy M, 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 uh, MPLS. Uh, just straight internet and a lot of times in offices where we're having uh, just work spot, we can just use cable modems. So you don't really need that infrastructure. So a lot of that overhead, the, the servers are overhead, you know, the MPLS is overhead, all these big ticket items, all this overhead, you know, it costs so much money. So we're able to replace some of those high ticket items and, and put what we need with the, the virtual servers with Panzer and the, and the standard servers and then work spot on top of that. So we barely have anything, you know, CapEx wise, uh, we're completely getting away from that. And, you know, it can't, you know, stop, you know, talk about anything on future without talking about AI, VR and AR. I mean, those technologies, that's, that's, uh, that's a reality. I mean, there's so many things that we're doing in the engineering field. I mean, people want to see what that project is going to look like, what that building is going to look like, um, you know, the predictive things you can do, especially with our transportation when you're sending cars down roads, and, uh, and and seeing what that's going to look like before you actually built it, that's that's what we're all about. Everything we do is vertical. Everything is in 3D, uh, and and we want to make sure that when we're clients are out there, they're getting exactly what uh, what they're asking for, and they can see that they can jump into it, they can do all that ahead of time. So that's what we're able to deliver, especially with the technologies that we're using. So what does that look like on spend? Geez, Andy, all this great technology, you must spend three times more. On your on your on your stuff than what we do, we can't afford what what Andy's doing. You know what does that look like on your spend? Well, here's what our spend looked like over the last eight years. I didn't get 2019 in there yet, but I'll have that in there shortly. As you can see, uh, you can see our company buildings keep on going up. And where does that company and where does the IT spend uh, go? It's all relatively the same. We keep spend about the same, and it's very predictive. We can do predictive spend. Because we are getting away from the capex, um, and we're going to opex, and that's that's what it's all about. I mean, I can almost tell you what each person, depending on their um, discipline in the company, what it's going to cost the company. So if it's if it's a designer, it might be they're going to be cost the company forty three hundred dollars. If you have someone who's a, an admin assistant, it could be you know twenty eight hundred dollars, whatever that number would be. So when I get the um, I get, you know, from each group leader who they're going to hire in this next year and say we're going to hire 100 people. Well, I can look at each one of those people and then I can see what their what their job duties are going to be. And then my budget is predictive on what those people are going to be doing for a company. So I can get sometimes on my budget within, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, which is pretty good on a budget because I know I'm never going to take that big hit because I know I'm not going to need that new blade server. I'm going to need other servers or we got a big acquisition. I got to replace everything in their in their uh, in, in their uh, organization. That that just isn't it. And oh, and by the way, when you have WorkSpot, if you do have an acquisition, what's really nice about that? Uh, until you get your infrastructure, you can drop an icon on their desktop, and bam, they're into your infrastructure. So you don't have to go in there with a team of people, replace all these machines, and do everything over on there. You could drop, you know, the the icon. They can go in, and they're completely on your system right away. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Or you have a, a disaster issue, an office burns down or something like that. You have that ability. You can get right back and, and get that uh, back to them. We had an office burned down a couple of years ago, had Panzer in it. 
I got a call. Hey, your office is burning down right now. Let's test out your DR um, uh, capability, Andy. And I'm like, no worries. Panzero probably have a new controller out to me faster than we can find that office space to get those people up and going. And I was more worried about the people and you know, make sure everybody's fine. Once that's done, then you got to go and say, what do we need to do and get that back going? Well, lo and behold, Panzera had new equipment out to us faster than we did get that space. So when we got that space, we were able to drop that controller in there and you know, rock and roll. We didn't lose anything, never lost a beat. So, I mean, there's a lot of advantages to, uh, to this technology uh, that, that we've had the experience of that um, you know, maybe a lot of other people didn't. Um, our main location had a 500 year flood. It was about a year and a half ago. I couldn't even get to our office. Uh, we had over, over 600 people, or it was 500 people at the time working outside of our uh, main location. What are we gonna do with these people? How are they gonna be able to work? What's gonna happen for that day when we couldn't get to our office? No problem. It was less than, uh, less than 10 minutes. We moved over from our primary to our secondary Panzera controller. All those people kept on working. They didn't even know that they were on the secondary controller. They, it was just like nothing happened to them. Everybody in our office couldn't get to our office, but they all continued to work. So that's, that's really, really the beauty of, of all this stuff is the resiliency that you have. Uh, and, and unfortunately, we've had to have these things happen and disasters are just you know, part, of the, uh, part of the equation. I don't worry about it. That doesn't keep me awake at night anymore if something happens. Uh, I feel very confident that we're going to continue to go, you know, when that happens. Well, and not to mention when you have fires and floods and so forth, right? If your workstations and your pans or appliances are in Azure, the Azure element doesn't burn down or get flooded. So yeah. it's like it doesn't matter where you are yourself with some sort of device, you can connect in and access it. And if we look at this slide here, that's an example of what you're accessing and what it looks like. Yep. And now we are actually... We're protected now because we put Azure across the entire US. We've got a west location, we got east location, we got a central location. So in those three regions, we're completely uh, uh, covered. If, if a region would go down in an area, we could move everything over to another region. So we, we, we feel like we have everything pretty much figured out. Um, there's always new stuff, but uh, we feel pretty comfortable where we're at. Cool, hey, you know what? A lot of folks at this time, they say, well, what does it look like to connect? So if I do this, I can just click on a button right here and this is my client, right? Yep. Pop in here. Now, normally the first time I get in here, I authenticate in, uh, but after I do that a few times, it actually then it asks me, uh, or it, I can enter in a passcode and connect in and it caches my credentials. And so it's super fast to authenticate. You can do two-factor authentication also. So when I'm in here, I can launch applications or my full-on cloud workstation. So if I click that icon right there, that's what it'll actually do. So it's pretty quick. Now the cloud workstation is running in Azure. Here we are out in Southern uh, Sunnyvale, California, and this is running on the West Coast here too. So this screen that just opened up is a GPU accelerated, just like the, the slide you just showed, mm -hmm. six virtual cores in there, GPU and so on. <clears throat> and here, you know, I've got uh, a Revit application open and I can grab this model and rip this thing around. It's just like right on my mouse, zoom in and out of this thing. You know, right now you'll have a little bit of extra delay because you're on GoToWebinar, but you'll see the recording of this later on. Um, and you know, who knows? Maybe even over, over Go GoToWebinar, it looks pretty clean. <clears throat> but this is basically um, how your users are working today, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you can do remote desktop, you can do WorkSpot. That's pretty much what it is. So, what's your theory then on you know the workstation is fully loaded and got all the files and the Panzer and data and it's super fast. But what devices are you giving them wherever they might be to connect to this? Yeah, so anything really mu pretty much works. I mean, we're getting the uh, we're getting some pretty inexpensive laptops right now. They're sub 300 laptops, and uh, speed doesn't matter. They just got to be able to again, it's if they can get screenshots on it, that that's all that really matters. So uh, you can put it on anything. Uh, in fact, we're using uh, some of the small little Microsoft tablets right now. We've run it on, and I've actually run Revit on my cell phone. So cell phone yeah. on, on a dock. And then from that dock, I had two screens hooked up and I'm actually able to do uh, Revit on my cell phone. So I, I actually think that two, three years from now, that's probably gonna be the, um, 
what we're going to be passing out to people is, yeah. you know, some sort of cell phone. I mean, it's, it should be. Yeah, because the uh, WorkSpot client runs native on Windows. So if you have a Surface Go, super inexpensive, but a great device for that, right? Yep. And it runs um, on Android. So you could have, you know, Samsung, you know, the, the 10 or the 20 that's coming out. Yep. And you know, what's interesting about it is you get to the 5G technology that's coming out and now you get single digit response, you know, latency to connect to these virtual desktops. And that's relevant because you know what? Andrew just came up with a question about AR VR. Yep. You know, when you get into the world of AR VR, that's latency sensitive. Yep. So now in that world, you could actually run super high end AR VR with low latent connections into your GPU workstations that are running in Azure. So game changer. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if, if you look at it, I don't know when it's going to hit. Once that 5G really completely takes over the map, then all rules go off. You won't need routers. You won't need switches. You won't need anything. Every user is going to be their own endpoint. So all that infrastructure, it all goes away. Um, going to the cloud is going to be, you know, that's just going to be easy. You know, hey, we're going to open up a new office, Andy. We got to get all this stuff. So right now, I still got to get wiring. I got to get routers. I got to get all this other stuff. Once 5G handles, it won't matter because everybody will be their own endpoint. That is really the game changer. Once 5G really takes hold, uh, that's that, that's really going to be the difference maker. Cool. All right. Let me pop this back out of the way here. And... Uh... What we can do is wrap her up right here then, right? Yep. Yeah. And there's, there's kind of a model of, of what what our system looks like. Uh, another one would be if we were in Central, but I got Panzers and the virtual Panzers in three different places across the U.S. Uh, we got WorkSpot out there. Uh, we got Panzer controllers in a lot of different locations. That map would be extremely clouded if we put everything that I had on there, but this is a good model of, of what we're currently working with. Excellent. And that, I'm going to turn it back over to 